In this tutorial, we will be implementing Coyote Time in a 2D platformer. As with anything programming related, there are many solutions to solve a problem. In this video, we're going to just be using a simple timer and some logic to add Coyote Time to a little retro platformer. The finished project can be downloaded straight from GitHub, links are down below. So this is the project currently with no Coyote Time. The demo scene has some platforms which is created with a tile map for the player to move and jump on. There's a player scene that provides movement, animation and a jump sound effect. I also added a camera as a child of the player so the camera will follow along with the player's movements. Running the project you can see we have a nice little retro platformer. The movement feels pretty good and tight. We do have a problem though. So when I jump close to the edge of a platform, it feels like my character should have jumped when they haven't. Code wise, there's no bugs. It's all working as it should. This is because when I jump in these scenarios, the player is technically not on the platform anymore. So this is where Coyote Time comes in. Coyote Time allows us to have a grace period after falling off a platform to still perform a jump, which results in a much smoother experience for the player. So let's go implement that now. First we need to add a timer to the player scene and rename it to Coyote Timer. Then set it as a one shot with a wait time of 0.15 seconds. We want the timer to be a one shot as we don't want the timer to restart when it reaches zero. Now let's go into our player script and add an on ready variable that references the newly created timer. Okay, so let's take a second and explain how we're going to implement the logic for adding Coyote Time to our player. It's only going to be a few lines of code, but since you will likely have a different player script than I have in this demo, we should understand the logic first so you can apply it to your own script. We want to start the timer when the player has transitioned from being on the floor to not being on the floor. Since we're using a kinematic body 2D for the player, we have access to the built-in isOnFloor method which returns true or false depending if the player is on the floor. In the player script, it's already being used to determine if the player can jump. Another thing to note is that value returned from the isOnFloor method gets updated every time we call move and slide. So what we need to do is create a variable that will store if the player was on the floor before move and slide was called. After move and slide is called, we need to compare our new variable to the current value from is on floor. And then we start the timer if the player has transitioned from being on the floor to not being on the floor. Then finally, we update the player's jump logic to take into consideration if the Coyote timer is active. Running the project now, the player feels nice and smooth to control as I'm no longer missing the close to the edge platform jumps that I was previously. Feel free to mess around with the timer value. 0.15 seconds is just what I feel works personally. Just experiment and do what feels good to you. That's it for this tutorial. If you feel so inclined, please subscribe and comment. That would be greatly appreciated. Other than that, have a fabulous day and see you in the next one.